Hello and welcome to one more episode with me, Samer. So this week was super interesting in the world of AI, but the most interesting update was the anthropic drop for computer use, the new Sonnet 3.5, and the all new HackU 3.5. Today, I will show you how to set up and run computer use by anthropic. And also we're gonna look at 3.5 Sonnet, the new version of it, and we're gonna test it together. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and remember, this is Samer, your guide into this AI and tech world. And with this, let's get started. Subscribe to Daddy's channel, the mic. So this is the announcement that we got from Anthropic. And if you didn't check it, I'll leave a link in the description. Introducing computer use in new Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and Cloud 3.5 Haiku. So go through the article yourself, I think it's an interesting read. But in a nutshell, basically they introduce the new Sonnet 3.5, uh, the new Haiku, and then they drop the computer use as a feature, which is a really interesting thing uh, to think of it. And you know, it brings the agents a little bit closer to the outer world. So your agent potentially by Anthropic is not only doing work in text that is providing based on the prompts that you give it, it's actually doing some work on your computer. And also note that they are mentioning that this is a beta version or experimental. And also one of the interesting things they said, Asana, Canva, Cognition, DoorDash, Replit, and the browser company have already begun to explore these possibilities, carrying out tasks that require dozens and sometimes even hundreds of steps to complete. For example, Replit is using Cloud 3.5 Sonnet's capability with computer use and UI navigation to develop a key feature that evaluates apps as they're being built for the Replit Asian product. So it is something definitely I'll be waiting for and anticipating, and once that is dropped, I'll create a video about it. So if you scroll down further in the announcement, there's a video where they show computer use. I'm not gonna show the video because I'm gonna do the demo myself. And lastly, what they mention is, Sonnet 3.5, the new version is already out. So if you're a paid uh, customer of Anthropic, uh, you can have access to it, maybe even uh, the free ones as well. So if you're not a paid customer, you also have access to it. And the new 3.5 Haiku will come out by the end of the month. And here they show the benchmarks uh, for the new models compared to the older ones and other competing models like uh, GPT-40. Now, if you look at Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and the new 3.5 Sonnet, there is significant improvement. And with this, you can read, again, the whole thing uh, on your own. Let's go to the documentation. So here you can go and find all the documentation uh, around the computer use code, and you can see the details, how to run it, how to use it. Now, the interesting part here, if you go to the documentation, there is the computer use reference implementation. Once you click on it, you're gonna go to a GitHub repository. So this is the GitHub repository that will show you how to run the feature on your computer. And this is what we're gonna do now. So again, you can read the details here in this GitHub repository. I think it's by an account associated by Anthropic because it's on their official website. And just to remind you, after this demo with computer use, I'm gonna still go and build an application using the new 3.5 Sonnet on Replit. And for us all to see how it operates, how good it is when it comes to coding, I'm gonna use a, a prompt that I did in the past where Sonnet 3.5 and other AI didn't really give me the results I was looking for and I'm gonna test it again on the new model so we all can see if it really is a big improvement over the original one or not. Okay, so going back to computer use. So this is the whole code we actually need to run computer use on our machine. Now, two things we need to do before we basically copy this and paste it into the terminal. One of them, we need to get the API key for Anthropic, and here they have the link for you to go to the Anthropic console. So if you click at that, you're gonna to go to this page, and here you can click get API key and get yours. So just to show you, I'm gonna create a key now, use it for this demo, and then delete it obviously. So I will call it computer use test and then the default workspace. And then you get the API key, you just copy the key. And now we can just go to a text pad and paste this. So here, this is just a normal text pad. I have my API key here. 
and then I have this code snippet we got from the GitHub repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this API key here and then replace the Anthropic API key in this part here. So now we are ready to use it, but if you notice here, it mentions Docker. So this is an application basically used in coding to do some kind of separation of the computing where this happens. You don't need to worry about this. Just know for you to run the session on your machine, you have to download Docker. So let's do that. And then we can copy this, paste it into the terminal and start demoing the new feature. So if you go back to the browser, you can go to docker.com. So this is the website and hit download Docker. And then my machine is a Mac with an Apple Silicon. I'll click at that, I'll get it downloaded and then I'll run it. So now that we have the API key, we are ready to run this on the Docker desktop application. But before we do that, this is something that we need to modify a little bit to run on a terminal. So let me copy this and then I'll go to Cloud 3.5 Sonnet basically again. And then I'll ask it to modify it for me in a way that I can use with the terminal. I will include this in the description as well. So you can just take it from there, replace your API key and just run with it. So now we are on the Docker desktop app and we're ready to paste that code and run it. Now I had to change something when it comes to the ports because on Mac there are certain ports used for certain applications. So we have to modify the ports. This is why you need the code that I mentioned in the description just to replace your API key and run this thing. So here we have to click the terminal. We open up the terminal and then I paste the code that you have on the description side. And now we're ready just to hit enter, create the Docker and then run the application. So now we can see that it ran successfully and we have a link here that will take us to the deployment of it on the local machine, on the browser, obviously. So you can just click the link here straight from the terminal and we have computer use running in real time on our machine. Now I'll have to show you more of the screen just to show you this here. So I tried to you know, play with things, I couldn't. So apparently I'll have to click this button which is toggle screen control off. So I click it, so now it's connecting to my screen. So now the screen control is on and I can interact with it accordingly. So rather than I control things from the virtual desktop you see in front of you, by clicking as I did the toggle thing now on so I can actually control it, I want to start doing that through prompts. So let's test the first one where simply I ask it to open Firefox for me. So I simply said open Firefox, let's see how it reacts. So it's running the agent, so it took a screenshot. I think it clearly saw nothing. Now it's going for a coordinate. So it opened it, my hands are free. I'm not touching the uh, keyboard or anything. Actually, just to prove a case, I'm going to go back and do toggle screen control off. So now, even if I click anything, it's doing nothing. So this is me controlling here on the bottom. Nothing is happening, as you see, because I toggled it off. Now, let's, let's do something um, more interesting. So let's search maybe for a page and uh, ask it to collect information and move it uh, into an Excel sheet. So... Now I'm going to see how it actually types. So I'm asking it search for months in the year in Chinese. So I'll click that, hands off. So you can see this in real time working. So it's putting in the coordinates and you can see on Google, it pasted the information. It got the results. So now let's take it a notch. What I'm going to ask it is take those months, the Chinese months, and then copy paste each one of them into an Excel sheet with each month in a row. So it's still going, still um, just making sure it got me the results. So this is interesting, by the way, I don't know if you noticed. So I got the first version of the results and then a second version and it kept going around and until it's, it's still making sure apparently that I get all the results in one place. So it's kicking, like, uh, clicking other things. I think it's looking for the 12, the complete 12 months in the results. So, um, Maybe it doesn't uh, realize that you can actually click on one of the links to get the complete drop down of the 12 months. So I have them actually. So you can see here on the left, I can enlarge it. So I have the results here in text. So let's now ask it to move all of that information into an Excel sheet. Okay, so I gave it the next prompt, which is move each month in a new row and a new column in an Excel sheet. Start from the first row and column. So basically, it will put, you know, the first month, then it will go to the second row, second column, the second one, it will put the second month, 
and so so forth. So, so it should be looking like a downward kind of line when it populates all the Chinese months in that Excel sheet. So let me hit run and see what it does. So it opened the Excel sheet and I think it has its own memory so it doesn't need to just like copy paste. It will just uh, start populating text um, by using the mouse in each cell. So I hope you are uh, able to see how it's working, which is really amazing. So you can see it's get, get, getting the months one by one and putting them in new rows and new columns. It is going back, taking a screenshot, checking, you know, where it is progressing and continuing. Now it is still running, so it's not that fast. Um, it will take it time, uh, but it's just interesting. Oh, and we have a mistake. So if you see based on the prompt, we have these two months over here. They were put on the same row. Now it's continuing as uh, requested, but these two, it messed up uh, the, the, the row, the same row, uh, but different columns. So partly it didn't get really what I requested for. So it's interesting. I mean, I will not continue on that. So now you have everything you need to really do it for yourself. Run the application, computer use. Tell me what you do with it, what you play with it. This is just the start. You have to realize that. This is when we have agents working on our computers. Could be interesting, could be scary to some, but definitely lots of potential in uh, such a technology. Okay, now that we tested the computer use, which is interesting, you can do it for yourself. You have everything in the description. Check that code that you'll have to use with the Docker. Now let's test uh, 3.5 Sonnet, the new one. So if you log to Claude, you will see Claude 3.5 Sonnet between brackets new. This is the new one. If you drop down, you're going to see the older ones when it comes to Opus and Haiku. Haiku, the all new 3.5 version, will come out as they mentioned by the end of the month, which is a week or so. So that's not a big deal. So for now, let's test the 3.5 Sonnet. And I'm going to do that by giving it a prompt to create an application that I have did and tested in the past. I didn't get the results I wanted. I, I actually tested this with the uh, NVIDIA newer model based on 3.1 Llama. So this is the prompt. Create an application where there is a user login and sign up. And once user logs in, they can create notebooks. And within each notebook, they can create note pages. User should be able to create, edit, and delete notes and notebooks. Give me ready-to-paste code blocks for each file needed. I will be building this on Replit, so decide the best type of REPL needed for such use. So high level, very simple. Usually models will struggle to give me something that is actually working from the first go. So let's test now with the new Sonnet 3.5. Okay, so I got my response. It gave me code blocks with different files. And it's recommending that I create a Python REPL on Replet. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create those files, paste the code in, and then we can run it together. Okay, so the new Sonnet 3.5 gave me nine files to create. The first one is main.py, which has the application, basically the Python code. And then eight other files that are HTML files, basically, and that have templates for everything that we're going to see in the user interface. So we have a base, we have edit note, login, new note, new notebook, notebooks, sign up, and then view notebook. So we should have everything uh, properly done. So now let's test and see what we get. So let me hit run. So it's installing all the dependencies and it is firing the application on the web view. So let me go to the web view here. Okay, so this looks nice. So we have a login, we have a sign up. Let me click on sign up. So this is me going on sign up. So let me say Sam, Sam, Sam. I'll hit sign up. So I'm now going to log in. So I'll hit Sam and then Sam, Sam, I hit login. Okay. So here I'm on my notebooks. It's really interesting. I think it's working. So I have uh, basically a shortcut to log out and go to my notebooks. And again, remember, this is one prompt, one really short prompt. So let me add a notebook. I'll give it a title. I didn't prompt it to create titles, by the way. So this is just something from the Sonnet, new Sonnet 3.5 creativity. I'll create that notebook and I have it in a folder. I'll hit view. And inside it, I can actually create a note. So this is a new note. I'll give it a title project and I'll write something here, test, for example, and then I'll hit create a note. And I have the note against using the template and I can even add the new note. Let's call this project two, test two, create the note. So it's a fully operational um, 
notebook type of application so i can go back to my notebooks this is the note let me create another one personal so this could be my new one note basically and you can you can launch it uh, i can launch it actually now on the cloud uh, through Ripplet, again, something great about Ripplet, and you all can use it. So um, let us see if we can, again, go to view um, the new one. Again, there's notes. Let me do test three or project three. Anyways, write anything here, create note. Again, I go back here to the main notebooks. Let me try to delete a notebook. Click OK. Let's delete it. Let me go here inside again, and let me edit. A note is just right edited update note it's edited here you can see it's updated and i have also a timestamp which is interesting um let me delete this one I hit delete it's a fully functional note application with one prompt so imagine what i can do if i want to really take this to the next step it already has the uh, feature to log in and sign up so i can hit log out now and I go back to the login page. Now, one interesting thing we can check out, does it create does it create a database for the users? Where does it um, uh, keep that? So this is the instances. So this is the database. So it even created a database within the code, the creation of database that will manage the user base for me. And I assume if I spend little time, if this it got it perfect with one prompt, I assume if, it, if I give it more time, I can actually do much more with this and I can take it to the next level when it comes to the back end and front end. So this brings us to the end of today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed the computer use demo and also you've seen how much powerful the new Sonnet 3.5 is. I think we can just develop things much faster and at a higher quality. I'm going to definitely do other projects with it. And as usual, I'll keep sharing those projects with you so we can all develop and learn together. Do not forget to please subscribe to my channel. It's free, totally free. Hit that like button, share it with others if you want. And best of all, write me a comment so we can interact together and continue this conversation. And with this, thank you for watching and goodbye. Subscribe to daddy's channel. Give me the mic.